So I'm just doing <laughs> I'm just doing the intro because it's very much uh, in line with them um, with the topic of this um, conference, uh, local innovation and global progress, and also then beyond health. And we will have a session Thursday morning as a plenary, but today we will hear about two concrete examples from Mozambique and from Malawi. That is very interesting. Looking both into the to the issues for agriculture, but also climate uh, impacts on agri agriculture. And we also can know that the topic of climate health is also a very um, new topic that is up and coming and also under discussion how we can support that. So I'm just doing the intro and over to Mr. Severino from his Mozambique. No, Sergio, sorry. No, the same, the same. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to share with you the, the, the experience um, that what we are doing uh, as part of the uh, adoption or, or the use of DHS2 in, for the uh, management of agriculture and uh, climate data. So I will be uh, presenting here with the the first session I will, I will be uh, doing then, and then we have a demo. And then after that, the, the colleague uh, Tiong from, from Malawi will present also the, the experience from Malawi. So as uh, they start to start, yeah, so the, 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 the DHS for agriculture in climate is being, this project is being implemented um, by, let's say, by South Digitals, uh, with support always from the, the universities and the community, the DHS community which is um, a, a set of tools that um, um, are developed with the aim of integrating or to enable the integration of data coming from multiple sources, um, which we are, one of the components is the earlier warning system, uh, which is uh, uh, using some data, uh, climate data to, uh, and other components to produce some information that can be used for um, a, a specific actions related to uh, early warnings and also the, the, the management of data that can be used for uh, planning specific interventions. So uh, the, the platform is one of the, one of the objectives uh, of the platform is to um, address some of the, uh, the, the agriculture um, value chain aspects, which include keeping farmers and community more, more updated with the information, climate information, and also practices, because there are several uh, aspects that are related to the, 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 the farming process, which we, we, we are uh, somehow uh, alerting or producing information sharing with the farmers so that they can use that information for on day to day, on day to day, on day, day, day uh, activities, also stimulate some uh, local production and the consumption, and there are there are also objectives on promoting trade. Uh, this is the, the use case that we are going to to to, to present today. Specifically, the tool that we developed that can be used to 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 to, to communicate between the the the, 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 the farmers and the, and the the consumers, as well as uh, raising some uh, partnerships that uh, there are links between the, the different stakeholders that can be done also through the 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 the, 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 the platform. So we are we, this process we are learning it from uh, the, the, the the malaria uh, early warning system that uh, uh, we implemented in Mozambique for the malaria for the national malaria control program. Uh, that um, the idea is to help well, is to help uh, the malaria program to um, uh, uh, use malaria data and uh, climate data to uh, predict malaria incidents cases in the districts by identifying some uh, uh, permanent uh, uh, outbreaks. So this is a, 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 an example of how we are, we are using it. There are, we are using climate data, and there, is, there are also some statistical models that were implemented based on that inf information. And uh, the historical information that have been collected by the, 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 the malaria uh, program that were entered by the different districts and facilities, we. There is a predicted uh, that we predict what is the possibility of having an uh, uh, outbreak, malaria outbreak. So there are in this in this model we use the, the Google uh, engine uh, to, to to capture or to collect uh, uh, climate data. And then there were some uh, uh, 
uh, processing uh, uh, using some scripts and also, as I mentioned, the model that was uh, was uh, uh, developed uh, by uh, some researchers that we embedded it on the on the script and then used to predict or to generate some information that we send it back to into DHIS2. Uh, in terms of uh, the, 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 the agriculture, the, the idea, as I, as I mentioned, is to collect data coming from different sources. And uh, this information is expected to uh, be used to enable uh, quick uh, uh, information access and also to be cost effective. Well, and what, during this process, we have worked with uh, some, some, some farmers and um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this process, we some of the uh, uh, tools that we used were uh, SMS based and uh, also Android because we wanted to uh, uh, to reach out the different type of stakeholders because there are some situations so there are some lead farmers that they have mobile phones so those ones the 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 Android phone those ones they are receiving they are receiving information using the, the the apps that were developed using the the the, the Android app in the DHIS to generate that information and then there are also SMS based information that was generated to some uh, a group of uh, of uh, farmers that they did not have these uh, new, as you can say, Android phones. Uh, in this process, we also have to uh, use the radio communities because uh, there are some situations that are with some of the farmers did not have mobile phones. In that case, they, they were in one of the provinces where to work with uh, uh, these community radios. And we provided tablets to them so they were able to, to read the data or to get data from the system. Based on that information, we were generating, uh, they were accessing that information and then using it to communicate in the, in the specific program that they have with the, with the, with the, with the uh, we, 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 they have in their radios to the, to the different communities. We also, uh, apart from this enabling this access of information, we also uh, um, expect the platform we are to, to be used to uh, strengthen the disease surveillance in relation to, as I said, as I mentioned, they, it's used now for, for, for malaria. Uh, we withdraw lesson from the malaria, but the idea is to use the same approach for the for the, for the agriculture for the, the disease that are affecting crops and pests. Um, specifically, this is the 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 the, 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 the let's say let's say the uh, architecture of the system where the, we are getting some of these systems. They are they are automatic. That they were still getting it using manual process, but at the moment we are. Um, uh, 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 implementing or developing uh, tools that can will be able to uh, to, to uh, enable or, they, or to collect that information in, uh, automatically to be uh, in, in, entered in, the, in, the, in DHIS2 and based on the, that information, they will be getting uh, um, the, the, those notifications. As I mentioned, some of these mod the, the, the uh, implementation, they are ready, the other one is uh, still in, 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 in process. Uh, I, uh, with regard to the, to the implementation, this is the model that we, 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 we have. There are some tracker programs that have been uh, uh, developed. We also have uh, data sets where, where, that are, where we are uh, uh, recording information related to, 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 to market prices. This is the Minister of Agriculture runs on weekly basis, um, uh, if collects on weekly basis the information and then they keep it in Excel. So based on, what, based on that information, we are getting it into, into, into DHIS2. There are also some uh, event programs that were developed to um, uh, uh, re re uh, collect some of this information or record some of the information. So now I will hand up to Alfredo to uh, uh, continue with the demo of this uh, aspect that we are doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, hi to, to everyone. My name is Alfredo Mushanga. I am part of the Saudi teams and I, I lead the development team. So I will start this demo uh, showing the, the marketplace uh, uh, domain test, uh, at the first moment, because we have here, this is the official website of the Minister of Culture in Mozambique and we can, they publish the prices of the, of the, of the products uh, uh, that they have. So basically, they have a set of data sets. Like each each week, they publish the the, the standard prices for 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 the projects. And as you can see here, we have the, the all prices until 
uh, are May. Uh, maybe some of other data are not, are not yet uh, published. So the first basic thing that we did is to create a, a simple data set on the DHS2, where based on the product code, uh, the description, we can have here uh, uh, the price per unit. So that's something very basic, but that have a very big impact. Because right now, uh, they, they deal with this data in a very complicated uh, manner because they have uh, a lot of, 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 of Excel to, to, to deal with and they have a very complicated uh, data set. And this is one of, of the example of files they do they, they have. So changing it to DGS2 was something very basic and that have a very great impact in terms of, 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 of implementation. The second part is related with the, the agriculture and uh, uh, consumer part. Uh, what we did is uh, a, a, a work at the field was there some uh, community-based activity that was implemented in order to work with the local organizations and get uh, uh, all farmers that belongs to some groups registered in the system. So we have uh, 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 a community-based uh, 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 nominal uh, list of all farmers that belongs to these groups. So they created the DGS2 as a, and track at, a track at end, uh, end instance that we want to track uh, along the time. So basically what they, they can do in the system, uh, we, we, we collect the basic information about them, the, 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 the name, and other uh, uh, personal info. And then we have here some options. So these options represent service. Uh, it's in Portuguese, I'm sorry for that. But these options represent service that they want to, to, to be part of. So if they say that they want to, to receive uh, this, uh, if, they, if they say they want to receive information about pragas, that is a uh, 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 disease, like, like plant disease, they are going to be part of the groups that will receive uh, notification for this uh, domain. But we also have the, the marketplace. So what we did is for each uh, truck and entity that is a farmer, we created uh, a program stage where it's possible to do the, where they can post, they can publish their the own product, where they can specify the, what is the product, what is the, the, the amount that they have available, the, the, the unit and price per unit and other details that are important for, for this uh, selling process. We did the same for the consumers. We, we do have uh, uh, also a program stage that is, is called request. So basically, uh, uh, the consumer is going to request something that the, 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 the farmer uh, publishes. So we link it, uh, uh, these two uh, 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 programs using custom uh, uh, development app. And this is one of the, the, the apps. This is the, the web uh, uh, app called Bazara. Uh, this is a, a, a digital uh, marketplace. And basically what we have here, we have this, this background information. We have uh, a possibility of using the, the Android application because there is a specific Android app where they can publish and, and, and see all, 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 all products. We, our approach was to build a single application because we know that the same farmer at some moment can also be a consumer, can want to buy something uh, with another, another one. So we build this, a single application and during the, uh, this process can define whether it's going to access as uh, a producer or, or is going to access as uh, a, a, a consumer. And we have here this, this web version of the, of the app where we have here some, 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 some products. And if, if we want to explore, we just go to this field and, and open the, 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 the app and can see all the details. And uh, finally, we do have uh, this, this another portal. So this portal is related with the, the events that that was mentioned here so at this moment we have the good practice uh, uh side where we 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 have all events related this the the, the banana uh, 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 uh process and we have various domains there so basically the radio uh, uh, uh workers they come here to this uh portal and also there is a small uh, application for that and they just read what is here in terms of what is the best practice to to produce uh, uh, whatever they want to, 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 to produce. And the same thing was built also for events. So in some regions, there are some events that uh, can affect a, a set of, of farmers. One of them are the uncontrolled burns. So if there is an uncontrolled burns, then I need to, to inform all people that are near 
of, of that possible affected area because maybe it's, it's caused by a natural situation. Like if you have a, a big forest, sometimes you can have an uncontrolled burn that was not caused by a human. So this is an, an example of situation that we, 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 we use to, to publish to the, to, the, to the farmers in order to, to they have access. So I, I won't uh, be long on that. I, I will just stop stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will now call uh, Yong. Uh, present the, the, the use case Malau. Um, three, three, three thousand, yeah. Three thousand. All right. Um, good afternoon. Yeah. So the the use case that I'll present is on the. Yeah, so the use case that I'll present is on the uh, National Agricultural Management Information System for, for Malawi. Um, in terms of system capabilities, so this is a, a national system. The idea is to provide integrated uh, support for extension workers uh, working at community level. So there are various system capabilities. So just some select capabilities is to have an early warning component so I'll just uh, explain a bit on the early warning component. So here is getting in data on uh, on weather, but the other aspect as well on the early warning is to be able to do uh, food situation assessments or production estimate surveys. So uh, after I've given the brief, uh, Lawrence will just show you, for example, how the food situation assessment works. So that is where a household I mean, uh, an extension worker visits a household and then assesses whether they have enough food to last them for a, a two week period. And there are also components like on trade and marketing, so which is which deals with uh, market information. And then there is uh, agricultural ex extension, so supporting services where an extension worker goes to the community level to document what's happening at the community level. And also, for example, follow what are called lead farmers. So these are model farmers at, uh, at community level. And then there's also a component on resource, resource mapping, so which just follows, let's say, what sort of support can be provided to households and also what projects are implemented, where those projects are implemented and what sort of uh, support they are uh, providing. So I think the next thing that we're going to do is, I think, just show you uh, what we have on the... Uh, food situation assessment. So we'll start with the household register. So the, the base for operations is the household register. And I think with the, the demo, you, you'll be able to, to see that. So I think Lawrence will, will, will share the screen, take you through the household register, what's provided in there, and then we'll take a look at the food situation assessment, and then we can, I'll get back and then we sort of like 
uh, wrap up on, on, on that. Okay, so as you're setting up the, the long list of things you see there is the, the list of uh, tools that we have uh, implemented within the, the, the platform. So it covers uh, a different range of, of activities. So starting the, the ones AMIS, that's for uh, the market information. And then the ones that start with APES, those are for production estimates. So there's several rounds of production estimates. So everything that reads APES is on production estimates. And then the, the ones that show the dice, those are for uh, extension services at, at community level. Right, so I think now we can go to the household register. All right, so uh, so uh, at uh, the beginning of uh, every agriculture season, uh, com uh, agriculture extension offices will go and do a uh, registration of all the, the households. So to do that, they make use of uh, the uh, household uh, register, which uh, uh, we, we did uh, implement. So I will not go through the actual adding of, I mean, adding data, I'll just go through what's, uh, what's, what's corrected uh, in each and every, I mean, every uh, stage. So uh, you correct uh, information on uh, uh, the household demographics. So like uh, the size of the household. So based on the uh, size of household, you correct the other information on uh, the details of uh, the household. For example, if you have three, I mean two, uh, it will ask you to enter details for the, uh, the two members which uh, you have uh, 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 mentioned. And then uh, if uh, maybe uh, you have uh, a member who is above 18 years, you're supposed to get more records on uh, uh, the uh, national ID because uh, in Malawi, uh, anyone below 15, 16 years does not have a national ID. So we don't want to ask uh, people to enter IDs for people who are not eligible for that. So uh, you have information on the demographics uh, and then you have uh, uh, farmers that sometimes belong to to a cooperative or uh, a group. So based on uh, that, uh, the uh, 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 we'll try to correct information on that. Uh, the different activities uh, that uh, the farmer is involved, for example, irrigation, or maybe it uh, depend on red rain fed agriculture. So you try they will correct. Uh, all those all those details uh, for that household and then after that they will check if they get support from from ngos so pretty much it's just a census of different uh, uh farming activities that are happening at, at at that household so that's what uh, is mainly involved in uh, the household household register so based on the information which is corrected on uh, this register uh, the household can, will be sampled for for other other activities which will happen during the growing the agriculture season because it's not like every household which uh, they will try to to go through as they're doing different activities they have some sample sampling mechanisms which they use to include other uh, households maybe in uh, uh, agricultural production I mean crops others in livestock if they have livestock or horticulture if uh, or fruits and, and the like. So pretty much after they have done that, they'll go through the sampling using that form and enroll those uh, uh, 
uh, households into different different programs. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I think as he's switching to the as he's switching to the next form. So what we'll do next is just to show the rapid food situation assessment. So this is where an extension worker goes to a household to check whether the food secure or food insecure. So as is yeah, so you can do the switch. Yeah. So as he's doing the switch, uh, the base. So like that support by NGO and also support by. Uh, government linked projects can be used as a basis for determining what support should be provided to households. All right, thank you. I'll use the same uh, household which we've registered. So in this case, uh, let's assume that uh, this household has been sampled for, for uh, some activities to do with uh, the rapid food situation assessment. So uh, that household will be enrolled into uh, that uh, program. So the enrollment is pretty much, uh, you're just registering that into, into the program. And then you need to, since uh, this activity, the rapid situation uh, activity happens every two weeks. So in each and every visit, you have uh, to indicate how many members you found at the household. Because the idea is uh, in those two weeks, you want to predict if, uh, if, uh, if that household is food secure or it's not, uh, it's fit in, insecure. So based on the number of households and the different activities which I will show that happens at, at that household, uh, the system should be able to, to tell the agriculture extension worker to advise maybe the, the household that uh, you're in food, food secure or food insecure or for other reporting reporting purposes. So we just assume maybe there are five uh, members in that household. I'll not uh, fill each and every uh, uh, detail. I'll just go to, to uh, uh, some of them. For example, uh, in Malawi, the stable food is maize. So maybe they don't grow the other. The other. Uh, so the main food crop, let's choose to be maize. And then uh, you need to uh, uh, indicate what's the main uh, source of food, as in maize, how do they produce that? Is it, do they buy or do they purchase? So let's, uh, let's take an example that uh, they do produce on their own. And then they need to indicate if food is available in their area or where they can have access to food in that uh, particular area. And they go into the specific household and uh, check if they have food in that uh, household. Then from there, they will try to do some food statistics, as in how much food is available in that household. For example, for maize, we assume they have uh, 20 kgs, and then uh, uh, just checking if they have uh, food available for the next two weeks, and how much time do they eat maybe in a day, is it once, uh, twice, or three times? Uh, check uh, if they have uh, 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 livestock or aquaculture, that is if they do some, some fish farming, what type of livestock do they keep? So let's assume they keep poultry and then uh, the, other, the other details. We also have a section on uh, coping mechanisms. Maybe if they don't have enough food, how do they deal with that? So pretty much you're correcting all the information which will guide you to determine if a household is secure or insecure. So at the end of the day, uh, let me check uh, for uh, savings and expenditure. How much do they get per fortnight? So as I said, it's corrected uh, per fortnight. How much do they spend? Maybe they spend five five hundred, but they get four hundred. So, uh, I don't think in that case they have nothing to save if uh, they do they do that uh, kind of uh, uh, spending. And then at the end of the day, uh, the the app based on uh, the population and what they have, it will determine the actual energy which they will need at that household based on the number of people, and then 
based on what they have provided, how much energy, food energy do they have? And then come up with a conclusion if uh, the household is food secure or food uh, insecure as uh, it's, been, it's been displayed there. So that's one of the use cases uh, which we have in, uh, in, uh, 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 in agriculture uh, in, uh, in Malawi. All right, thank you. Yes, you can have to in order to program. Support or, you know, what do they use it for? All right, yes. So the assessment is also, in one part, a basis for providing food support to the, to the households. And then also for policy planning in general, to look at the food situation within the country and then to determine what sort of interventions should should take place? Yeah. So uh, FAO is working on similar workflows globally. I know Afghanistan is one of them. Egypt is one of them. And I'm just wondering if you guys are duplicating the work or you're working hand in hand or sharing data together or whatnot. Cause... All right. So I think the basis for this implementation is uh, a methodology that the, the Ministry of Agriculture in Malawi has in terms of assessing the, the food situation. So this is a direct implementation of, of that. But the, the ministry on some other aspects also does work together with the FAO. So because I think FAO has also assisted with some other implementations. Sure. Thank you very much. Very fascinating presentation. I wanted to ask the presenter from Mozambique, are farmers uh, receiving these notifications and are they also able to report back like if a farmer has a dead animal in his that suddenly died in his farm can they do they have a way of reporting back or is just then the notifications are pushed to them thank you thank you uh, at the moment it's just one way uh, they report it through the lead farmers or the extension worker so the extension worker are the one that take that information and then report. They don't do it through the system. But to, yeah, we, what we, we started with one way, because it was the, the, the project that we had, and then the challenge was how they did start because they were challenged on how to expose their products. You know, you, if you find you, you find in Mozambique one place with the food that is not uh, used, and then the other places they are starving for food. And then the, the, that was one challenge. They said that we have been helping this specific farmer. They don't know how. They would like to have a platform where they could expose their products. And then we, well, everything starts from there. Then we start helping them and then start assembling the different modules. Just I can add one, one of the things that we, we, we did, we had challenges is how to get these farmers resistant in the, in the platform. Uh, the, the reason why we have 3,000 now is because we were working with those farmers that were in, engaged on those projects. But what, what, what we are discussing with the colleagues from Malau is to use this approach of registering. When they are registering the household, to be able to capture information, mobile phone, for example. Whether they have the just easy process there, they, they have to add possibility of having the phone number of the, 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 the head. Then the, through that, we can report, whenever there is information, we can report to those uh, individuals. The 3,000 that are using that, they are registered the official, they do have the the, the, the Android, we do it through the Android. They are the one that can publish the, the products, but the accessing the, 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 the platform is, is open, is that we can go and then download it, or even if you go to the web, we will be able to see it, we can do that communication. So uh, the, yeah, it is just one way at the moment, but we hope that in future, we'll be able to have this, the possibility of they sending the information. In fact, there are some implementation that we are having in the WASH program where we are using SMS based, the idea is to update the status of the different um, water sources. If the water source is not work, is broken, the community should be able to report, say that we have a water source that is broken so that they can be solved. At the moment we are doing that, 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 that implementation with the SNV, 
through UNICEF as a project with the WASH project. So we would like to maybe we'll be joining this so that we can use the same approach for the farmers. Super interesting. Uh, this is a question to Tvong. <laughs> so how many uh, households is registered? Do you know approximately? Um, so I think as of two days ago, because uh, we, we have revised the, the, the register. So in the, over the past two months, they've registered uh, 31,000 households. Okay. Yeah. So And you mentioned it was in 12 districts out of 28? Of districts. So the, the, the plan is that uh, within the next two months, like at the community level, they should register all eligible households because uh, the household register forms the basis for the, the work that they, they do. So in the other workflows for the system, you have sample-based tools and also some census-based tools. So like we have uh, livestock dynamic forms so those are census based so like all the households that will keep livestock you follow them but for for this like what we're demoing this the food situation assessment it's sample based and also production estimates it's sample based so what we do is that when the households have been registered we have like an app that does the sampling so then the sampled households are then enrolled to to this yeah, so over the, the next two months is for them to cover the rest of the households, and then we can use the sampling based on that. Is it every household or is it only household at risk? No, so you have two. Like for the household register, all households are supposed to be registered. Okay. And then for this, then you're taking a sample from that, yeah, broader list. Uh, there's a question there. Thank you. So I just wanted to know what has been your the the production of your accuracy estimates or the accuracy of your production estimates. I'm sorry. And what did you have before you before you rolled out um, a DHIS two instance in agriculture? All right. So for the uh, production estimates, the full season that we're going to run that is this fourth uh, coming season. Now uh, the previous one we ran a pilot just to to test the the tools. So because the the production estimates is just during the the rainy season, so the the next to be run will be like from September until until March. But before yeah, getting the tools in here, it's sort of like a paper based exercise so you'd have the extension workers going into the community doing the survey on, on paper and then consolidating that getting the data into excel and then uh, doing the calculations for the estimates to the district level and then you'd have you know a meeting convened at national level to do the to do the the reviews but then at least now with this because we have that process embedded as long as it's entered there then you can sort of calculate and cascade going up. You have like a measurable, you have some metrics that could show what your accuracy levels have been uh, before and, and now. So while you're using paper-based compared to uh, with the DHS2 instance. All right, so not at the moment, because as I was saying, the, the full scale of running the uh, prediction part will be this uh, forthcoming season. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Thanks. All right. So I think the, if there are no other questions, we can uh, re reflect. Yeah. So we also re reflect on some experiences. I mean, that have that have been there, in in terms of, yeah, implementing. DHIS to a machine switch.
All right, so uh, for some reflections in, in terms of uh, the, the, the work. So I think with uh, agriculture, the level of uh, digitalization and digital capacity, I think like in Malawi, and I think the experiences are also are quite similar with Mozambique, the level of digital capacity is, is lower compared to health, for example, where we've done a lot of implementations over, over the years. So it's uh, pretty green. So I think one thing that we've been uh, trying to concentrate and, and work on is on capacity development. And I think there will still be need for uh, further capacity development at different levels. To So ac across things like, I mean, just general digital literacy, and then also uh, capacity for configuration, systems management, and so on and so forth. But similar at the same time, we're also trying to reuse some of the existing capacity that has been uh, developed within within health and besides that uh, not all workflows are currently adequately supported so there are a few where you'd need to have work around so one thing for example i've talked about a sampling so because out of the box at the moment we can't generate the the samples so what we've done for example in the for the Malawian use case is to develop a sampling app that would get into the household register and then run the the sampling and then besides that as well also when you're handling like that many forms as I, as I showed it also is cumbersome to do the manual enrollment so then the app also hand, handles Enroll, enrollment of the eligible households to to the various uh, survey tools that are sample sample based, and also in terms of uh, reporting formats, there is need for uh, some adjustments. So we do have, for example, a, a custom app that uh, assists with presenting the, the data in terms of the the tables and formats that the ministry does use. And but now I think we've also seen like uh, the development within the core DHS of the custom reporting app. So we intend to test that and, and leverage that. And I think another interesting bit uh, is on the, the, the workflow at the, the lowest level. For example, having double tracked entities uh, because the, the general uh, tracker model is to track an entity. So when you get to the community level, you have a household and then you, you want to track the household, but you may also want to track individuals within within that household. So, but in this case, uh, to also listen on the, the the workload, we've mainly just focused on tracking the the household, but having the members of the household just within that household. But I think going forward, supporting that uh, dual tracking would be essential because we've encountered that in our other implementation because we having also an implementation at a community level for a community health information system. So within that, then we have a household, actually like three levels, you have a community and then you have a household within the community and then you have people that are supposed to be linked to, to, the, to the household. Yeah, so I think that's some other points that I felt we should uh, possibly uh, reflect on. So is there any additional Comments or questions, they're, they're welcome. Yes, Kino. This is super interesting. Just to touch on two things, actually. Oh, sorry. Uh, so first, there was a there was a question earlier about um, if 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 there is a uh, dead uh, dead cow or or uh, some kind of animal disease i was just thinking in terms of connections to health uh, definitely climate health is a big and new topic but but just specifically on um animal health one the, this concept of one health is that also because you seem to be focused a lot on crops which is great but uh, are you also thinking to expand into animals and livestock and uh, i guess the other question is uh, is is related to your last comment about household registries so do you foresee some more direct connection with the civil registration and, and 
if you have those households, you could also use that for health uh, or or education or other. All right. Uh, thank you. So I'll start, and then if there are any additions, Zef can can chip in. Yeah. So in terms of the the, the health aspect, so maybe because of time we didn't run through everything, but we do have like tools within this for for the livestock component. Yeah. So tracking the various animal dynamics and so on and so forth. So those are available. And then uh, there is also an ongoing discussion in terms of how this can be linked to the uh, One Health Surveillance platform within within the country, because mainly it's in as much as it's supposed to be, you know, human, animal, and then environment. Uh, so far, the focus has been on the on the human component. Yeah. So, but then there's that discussion to see how this uh, can be linked within that. But also, I think another discussion that we've had is there's the like as we have this exchange uh, program with uh, UIO, University of Eduardo Mondlane, and also University of Dar es Salaam. So, uh, I think over the the past few weeks, we're working on some some courses as well. And one thing that also did come up from there was how to look at these system configurations where you, you are addressing multiple use cases. Because one thing that's been discussed is that when you look at uh, health, for example, the community health worker also has a household register. Yeah, and if and then they, within this, there are also components of nutrition. And if someone is sick, then it's going to affect the labor availability within agriculture and stuff. So. I think that uh, possible linkage is 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 critical, and also just on your other question, also when you look at this, that you're supposed to provide certain integrated services to individuals, but at the moment you'd see like agriculture, the the register health, the household register, and then you're supposed to provide some support to push on certain households against uh, shocks, but you know there is sort of like uh, conf configure. Uh, configuration silos across ministries. Right. So obviously, I think going forward, there is need to also have that reconfiguration of the services to then align these sort of systems that you you're not uh, duplicating the the efforts. Yeah, because like here, the extension worker will visit all the households, register them. The surveillance, I mean, the uh, health surveillance assistant will visit all the households and and register them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh I can add a bit for taking this example. We are, we are, we are supporting the implementation of uh, community information system in Angola that we have been discussing because the Angola model is different from the others. In, in Angola, they have one which they call ADECO, which is agent development community, the community development agent that is, is not only looking at the health, but is also looking for education, financial, all these aspects, economic. So we will be having a meeting uh, in July, I think, uh, Shippo, yeah? So, and then the Angola team that will be joining. So we hope that we, in this meeting, we'll be discussing about this, this process and then see how this can be adopted uh, in other countries and then suggested, for example, see how we can use it in, in Mozambique or in Angola because, or not yeah, Mozambique in the Malawi because Angola is already using that. So we, that's is one, one, one way of looking at in the, the, the integrated services that, uh, that, that can be provided at the, at the community. And uh, with, uh, with regard to the disease surveillance, you know, we have been looking at that. Actually, uh, there is, they, they do have a process within the, 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 the agriculture, with the, the, there is a notification. And then after that, they, 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 these extension workers are notified, and then they communicate with it at the district level. The district agriculture, often they send people to the community to contain or even to do the treatment. So after that, they, so they, they do have that flow which is similar to the health. So we just need to see how them, how can we link the two in, and they provide that. Uh, 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 fortunate or unfortunate, you know, in our, we, we do have these vertical systems you know, in, the, in the country. You see the, the agriculture, education, uh, water and sanitation, the health, they're all you keep working in a different, uh, they, 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 in a separate ways. And we hope that uh, this implementation can help them. Uh, in Mozambique, we are also supporting the WASH project. The, in the WASH project, we do have schools, we do we have communities, and one thing that they, they the WASH project they, they they did 
to present the 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 the, 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 the results. They invited also the uh, Minister of Education and uh, Health to participate in, in, in and then to show the platform that have been developed. This platform is based also on DHIS2. So the idea is to, okay, we have this. How can we use the same data instead of doing because when they wash the the they also work with the community. They go to the schools to do the, the, the assessment of the situation of the school. They go to the community, but this information you only is only available under the the the, 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 the minister the, the minister of uh, infrastructure. It's not available to other ministries. So that's uh, a discussion that needs to be uh, there in place and then make sure that this data can be shared across the different ministries. Thanks. So. Yep, I think there's just three minutes to go. So unless if there's anything, we could. All right. Yeah. The... Sorry, maybe I might be ignorant. I'm just wondering. We are talking about the same VHS too. Is this a different um, interface, or is it the same DHIS two that is being used in the medical field? And if there's an alert that comes through this system. Can the can it be uh, escalated to the surveillance team? Are you are we talking about two two separate interfaces or it's the same? Thank you. All right. So, like for the Malawi case, the implementation is it's a separate uh, instance. So this one is like implemented within the the Ministry of of Agriculture, and then the Ministry of Health has its own. But I think the, the limitations at the moment are just mainly because of the existing service configuration. But with the platform itself, it is possible to you know push the, the notifications across should that be enabled and demanded by the, the two entities. And that's where I was saying that there's need to have that sort of discussion because the, a lot of processes that are similar across and are interdependent. Right, so I think we can end there. So thanks, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for your time and for the contributions. Thank you.